there's a certain there's a certain YouTuber, maybe you'll pick him up in the algorithm. He is upset that Tyree Nichols uh is not being taken seriously by the divestor community. He believes that we should march for Tyree Nichols, no questions asked. He does not understand why we listen to another divested content creator. He says that she is too bougie and the majority of us black women that listen to her are low income to lower middle income to lower middle class. In the Bible, Isaiah 3, 26 to 4, 1. The Lord puts the onus on the man to provide for the woman. In fact, Jesus himself admonishes against the woman providing a significant amount of the household income. Isaiah 3, 26 through 4, 1. I will read it very quickly, but first I would like to say, y'all know how you men get when you can't control the household finances. Jesus also knows that because he created you. He created your testosterone. He created your hormones. This particular um, Manosphere black man content creator that's upset with a divested content creator and he himself says he has a girlfriend I pray to God she doesn't marry him and if he happens to pick this up in the algorithm I really hope you take the time to read what different religions um, Christianity um, Farrakhan I hope you take the time to really listen to what different religions have to say about manhood. Isaiah 3, 26 to 4, 1. And then I will go to the next topic because it's in the middle of the day. It is my lunch time. And then I will continue with my homework. And that is that. I have really long days every single day. Let's see. Let me see. Here we go. Isaiah, Isaiah three twenty five to through four one, which directly it's a metaphor for black women avoiding abortions. And then black women avoiding men. I'm sorry for the noise in the background. In fact, let me cut on my heater to counter some of the noise. In fact, Isaiah 3, 26 to 4, 1 is about, you know, black, black women avoiding abortion. Isaiah 3, 25 talks about the men of the city will die in battle. And then there will only be so many men to, you know, five different women, just like what it is now in the African-American community. And we'll all be trying to huddle around one man and they'll be trying to take advantage of it because all of the other men have been killed off and these women are def desperate to get married to someone of their cultural group. That is all in Isaiah 3, 25 through 4, 1. It's literally five sentences, but it says everything about the black community today. So Isaiah 3, 25. The men of the city will die in battle. And this part will be short. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing he said. Which is related to what's on my screen. Isaiah 3.25. The men of the city will die in battle. The black community. You could translate that to the men of the city will die by being aborted. 
verse 26, the gates of Jerusalem will weep and mourn. I believe the, an the angels mourn when the abortions occurred. The city will be like a ravaged woman huddled on the ground. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, when people die, there's a lot of mourning. There's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of women in the black community with emotional issues that have not dealt with, you know, talk to someone about all of the events surrounding that abortion. Um, and you know, that's a separate subject and I definitely recommend you do so if that's you, but let's move on. Isaiah 4, 1. In that day, keep in mind, the men have been killed out, the little boys in the black community, you know, a lot of them have been aborted. In that day, few men will be left alive, but this is when I get to the man's responsibility. It's all of our responsibility, but the man should stop absolving himself. Seven women will fight over each of them, each man, and say, let us all marry you. We will provide our own food and clothing. Only let us be called by your name. So we won't be mocked as old maids. So there are seven women asking one man, can we all be married to you? I know it's a lot financially for you, but don't worry. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay my own way. I just want to have your last name. Before Isaiah 3.25, you have... A section verse 18 and the section is called a warning it's titled a warning for Jerusalem's women a warning for Jerusalem's women he God warn warns the women from being too sedity and the consequences of that. But in that warning. He warns us. How we will incorrectly be treated by the man. Because of our sedidiness. That the man will take advantage of that. So the Lord is warning us, this is what will happen to you if you go down that right, down that route. But he never takes the onus off the man to stop taking advantage of how the women are behaving. He at the end, he still challenges the woman, the man to take his rightful place and to lead. Isaiah 4:1. In that day, few men will be left alive. Seven women will fight over each of them and say, let us all marry you. We will provide our own food and clothing. Only let us be called by your name so we won't be mocked as old maids. This is all under a sanction title, A Warning for Jerusalem's Women. So if that is a warning, God is saying here, I did not mean for women to be paying their own way when there is a capable man in the household. Now, did God say, you know, how each, exactly how each household should budget? No. He left that up to free will for you to discuss as a couple. You'll see that throughout the Bible. But he did lay out some clear ground rules. If there is a um, young, healthy man in that house, a woman should not be providing most of her bills. Ruth, moving on to, and that's in Isaiah 3, 25 to 4, 1. The book of Ruth. Her former mother-in-law, because her husband died, I believe. Her former mother-in-law 
said, hey, I know where you can find your next husband. This is where he works. And according to Jewish, I believe, tradition, that new husband, if he were to die, there were there was another husband already lined up for her, her current husband's brother or something like that. The Jewish had it in their tradition, in their tradition to take care of the women. No questions asked. There should not be 70% of black women who are not married. That is antithetical to God's design for the family. You know what my mom told me? She's. You know what my mom told me? She said that if I was um, like Louis Farrakhan in that religion, that I will already be married by now because that's their culture. They're not going to just stand there and let a pretty face be unmarried. Somebody's going to snatch you up because they promote marriage in their community. And that is closer to what the Bible required. In fact, in biblical days, an unmarried woman, you know, people would wonder like, is she one of the town hookers? Did her husband die? Did he treat her unfairly? They they would ask all type of questions. Like what happened? Because this is not a part of our custom. So I say all of that to say. If you're going to say. The majority of these women are poor. And then he said. The, the content creator said. I don't say that to make fun of them. But then he goes on to say. These women are poor and living with their mom. And they're, they'll probably be poor and living with their mom until their 40s. The onus culturally is on you to not see a single woman unmarried. That's what our culture is supposed to be. And then the next argument is... Oh, well, these women aren't any good anyway. They're ghetto. They're nasty. I've never seen another group of women read more self-help books to try to get themselves together. Be the most educated by percentage of entire racial groups. So if you set all the black women in the United States in one, you know, in in one city and just lined us all up in New York City and just sat us there. Majority of the black women you sat in New York City would have some form of a college education. You can't say that about any other racial group of women in this country. You can't say that about the Asians, but our percentages are a little bit higher than them. You have quality women. You choose not to wife us. That is antithetical to many different religious cultures and billions of people. I think over half of the earth, a stat I read, over half of the earth practices Abrahamic religions. So you, sir, are not in the mold. We black women over here, we black American women over here are doing what we need to do. You, sir, need to get with your brothers and see why you aren't and see why you aren't following 
the tenets of these Abrahamic religions. Number two, he also said, oh, they live with their moms. And he was making fun of it. They live with their moms until they're 28 and 40. Again, we just established that the onus is on you as the men in the community to not just see a bunch of young pretty faces standing around and not try to find husbands for them. That's your fault. Which is why the diverse community exists because we're trying to get women out of this stronghold of believing that it is feminine for them to sit and wait for black men to get themselves together in the hope that one of them asks you for your hand in marriage. We should not continue to hear all of their excuses and, oh, I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Especially if you're over 30. You say you want to bring a woman in your bed. Like Beyonce said, after you pay me my persuasion can build a nation endless power of love he can devour he'll do anything for me who runs the world girls get it right learn the bible Now, he, as I was saying previously, was making fun of black women. Oh, they all still live with their moms. They don't have any money. Well, guess what? You can't laugh at me. Because the Bible says the onus is on you to provide for me. The Proverbs 31 woman, and that's Isaiah 326 325 to 41. The Proverbs 31 woman says that I am to get up and to go to work and to be a leader in the community that all the people love. But the onus, so I can't be lazy. I do need to work or find a talent and be good at it and do that. But I am not to provide the majority of the income. That, my dear, comes from a man. So me being low income, as Mr. Lubo said on his channel, is not your concern. The onus is on you, sir, to not be low income. And that is the Bible. And I would argue many Abrahamic religions. I think it's about three or four. I will argue all of the Abrahamic religions. So, oh, they low income. I hope that, he said, they low income, I hope. That they stay poor because they're divesters in any way and I don't want to help Tyree Nichols. And there's a lot of millions of men on, on the internet that feel this way. We've seen it on TikTok. We've seen it everywhere. They don't know my God. They don't know the Bible. They don't know or understand the Abrahamic religions that half of the world belong to. So therefore, they don't know that they are out of step. And we are not. I'm not saying that black women are perfect. No. But how much better that you, can you get? We're the most educated women in this country. Our wigs and weaves, guess what? That means 
we keep up the maintenance. We, we, we're not a fan of looking scraggly in public. Now you're going to say, the bonnets, the bonnets. Well, you have a lot of white women that walk around with greasy hair and and crazy looking t-shirts. A lot of them don't put much effort when they go out, even just to the grocery store, because they think that their whiteness is enough. No, you still have to put a little oil on, you know, on the sides. You still have to kind of brush your hair. So we get our nails done. We get our hair done. We read the self-help books. We go to school. We do church. We read quotes to energize ourselves every day. We get in sister groups where we try to energize each other. You don't get better than a black woman. And I'm not a fan of Paris's video like oh you know i'm going to join her and even making a video like that that's not my ministry nor can you empirically prove that she was dancing on his grave because she's smart enough to know that the youtube algorithm triggers is triggered through certain words she didn't say bullet bags she didn't say, I hope he dies. She didn't say nothing like that that's so direct where she could actually get her video taken down. No, she did not say anything like that. But yes, her video is questionable. And I'm not going to tell you whether you should be offended or not. But her video is, is so It's just stating the facts and saying that you should march because he said these things in the past, but he also mirrored it recently when you don't see pictures of his black mom within the last 10 years anywhere on his social media. That's what she was saying, but you didn't see the rest of the video, but I will beg to differ that maybe you did see the rest of the video and you just don't care about his mom being on the internet or not. You saying that you're in a loving relationship with a black woman. How can you be in a loving relationship when you don't understand what manhood is and how to lead? I would beg to say that you probably don't care that Paris Milan talked about the fact that we don't see Tyree Nichols' mom within the last decade anywhere on that page. And whether your girlfriend is dark skin or light skin, when you take a non-Abrahamic, a non-biblical, a non-biblically inspired. You don't even have to be religious. But a lot of people use our quotes, etc. because they make common sense. If you're not using basic sensical logic, I would beg to differ. You're happy with your girlfriend just because she takes your logic. But if she were to question you and say, well, you know what? I'm sorry that he died and I don't wish anybody to die, but I shouldn't march for him because he wouldn't march for me. Which is basically what you're upset with now that black women are saying that. If your woman were to say that, which is just one degree backwards for you, you know, it's not much of a degree backwards because you're not saying, oh, I'm not sorry that he died. You're just saying, okay, I'll pray for him, but I'm going to sit this one out. Which is what Paris Milan and them were saying, which is just one degree backwards from what's going on. If your girlfriend were to devolve one degree backwards from that, you would probably be upset with her. You seem like one of those men who are happy if she take if if your girl takes the one hundred percent blackistan approach, 
give me empirical data to prove that Paris Milan was figuratively dancing on someone's grave. You cannot see it empirically. She read straight from his website and just said, hey, he's offending us, so let's not cape for him. That's common sense. That's sensical. She's not calling him names. She's not doing none of that. You make fun of us. Because you believe some of us live with our bombs and you hope that since we're quote unquote dancing on Tyree's green that we remain poor and living with our moms well into our 40s. I used to live in California. There's a lot of Asian young adults living with their parents until their late 20s. They literally leave their parents' house to the wedding bed, to their spouse's home. Asian women children. And that's their culture. I'm going to read some of what is said here, which I believe matches with a lot of the women I know in the black culture. It's like we're saving money, preparing for the next portion of our lives, preparing to get that job. A lot of people are just saving money. Let's read this. It is really quite easy to fall into the comfort of thinking that the assumptions and provisions of one's culture are the only sensible ones around. Coupled with that is the fact that it is really challenging to truly examine the cultural nature of norms that we see as as self-evident and to further interrogate the assumptions that those cultural practices are built upon. Let's take the living with parents situation from the question. It makes total sense that adult children to live independently, right? After all, shouldn't an adult child acquire the capability to fund their own living facilities? Except that this assumes that the only reason a child would live with their parents is due to personal ineptitude and perhaps lack of financial resources. What if the child lives with the parents so that they can take care of the parents, save money for better investments instead of draining it on rent? What if it makes sense for those involved, since the grandparents are willing to take on child care responsibilities for their grandchildren? But surely, adult children want their privacy. This assumes that privacy is of utmost importance in adult life. Privacy is a core tenet of adult life in the U.S. It is also central to politeness in this culture. She was saying the Asian culture. However, as surprising as this may be, privacy is just not that big a concern to many other cultures. As recently as my grandmother's generation, it was perfectly acceptable in India to ask someone whether they earned well. When I was growing up, the front door of several of my neighbors swung on its hinges with a barrage of neighbors and children coming and going as they please. That happens with Haitians as well, from what I hear. This wasn't a lack of consideration of chaos. It was just life. Sure, it seems bizarre and intrusive and repulsive to you, but the need for privacy is not a self-evident fact of nature. It is a cultural construct. Adult kids living with their parents is often seen as a sign of immaturity. It looks like dependence. It feels like incapability. It's odd. But it is totally fine to be dependent on your spouse for some elements of life, yes. And it's okay to be emotionally very attached to your siblings. Why then is it not acceptable to be close enough to your parents that you want to live with them? Living with parents isn't a choice any adult would make. In American culture, 
winding up in your parents' home in adulthood is considered symbolic of failure, a setback, a fall from glory, a penalty of circumstances. In short, it is a choice no one will want to make. And as visceral as those feelings are for some people, it is entirely driven by cultural norms. The reason many Asian Americans' adult children living with their parents is acceptable is simply because their culture has not connected such an arrangement, the various negative consumptions, stereotypes, and unsavory associations that American culture makes with adult children living with parents. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't a universal truth across the Asian American community. There are people who would rather have their own independent living arrangements, even if they loved and respected their parents. But it is still a fact that the lives in his or her parents' basement, which is what the guy said, derision is simply not a thing in Asian cultures. It's really as simple as that. In the Asian family dynamic, living with your parents is not a failure. It is not something to be ashamed of, and it is as viable a living option as any other for those who don't mind it. That is just what culture does. It gives you context. And a lot of that is happening with African American women, in fact. Since he says that Oh, Asian men are not checking for black women. Mm, I will beg to differ, especially those black women from the islands. I see a lot of them, those black American women that are from the islands, originally from the islands. I'm seeing, and from Africa, I'm seeing a lot of them with Asian men now because it's they have similar similar cultural norms. So I will beg to differ. Um. From cradle to grave, it influences your perceptions of what is and isn't normal, so much so that it sometimes makes you quite impervious to other versions of life. If something in a different culture seems wildly off to you, start with questioning your assumptions. And unless a cultural practice is actually damaging, abusive, or otherwise toxic, like honor killings, forced marriages, dowry, genital genital mutilation, etc. Uh, except that one's view of life is inextricably influenced by the culture they grew up in. Except embrace and celebrate the diverse stripes of life that people live in the world. It is what makes humanity vibrant. And this is on Quora by Sinhu. Mahadevan.